So it's blisteringly hot today. And I've decided to do a lightning protection on the roof. Thunderstorms are coming in towards the end of the week. And it makes me very nervous because there's a lot of uh, equipment up there that if it gets hit, we'll have a big problem. So what we've basically got is things that go on our roof. They screw into the ridge of the roof. So our roof isn't symmetrical, so the ridge isn't like this. So I'm gonna put a, a rubber washer underneath to, to bring it right and screw in here across the ridge. Hi. Hi, what's up with you now? That basket. Basket, you're taking your basket? Good. So we've got that, that one, that has an air rod going in it. I'll show you all this as we do it. Um, most of it I'll try to show on the ground because it's, it's hard work up there. Um, and I'm gonna be uh, melted to the roof. So this, this one is for the sides. So I was gonna screw in there, have our lightning tape is what we've got. It's 25 mil wide by three mil thick, the tape. And that screws on here. And then I'm gonna put another screw in there. I don't know if that's the right way of doing it. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know they sell that for lightning. And I know you need two rods either side to go in the ground. So they sell these sizes for lightning. So they should be sufficient for lightning. Um, they do do other sizes. Now, I suppose if you've got one rod in the ground you might need thicker tape but if you've got two rods in the ground surely that will disperse into the ground quickly uh, better with two so one rod either side of the building to go in the ground and I've got them and they're eight foot so I'm gonna put eight foot in the ground we will hit moisture in the ground which is good if you're on sand that's not so good so it depends on your ground quality as well reading into it so um, air rod screws into there I think they're 500 mil long so that screws into there like that that goes on the roof it's all alloy copper was too expensive they do aluminium it'll work as well as it can it's the, it's the most conductive thing up on the roof the roof is metal but it's plastic coated and then we've got I can't remember I think it's 25 meters of tape and I've got all sorts of brackets to join the tape, crossovers. So if I need to, so I can put a piece of tape there and then go off at an angle with another piece of tape there. So that will sort of cross over, all made to hold uh, two lots of three mil, 25 mil wide tape, that one, so it can cross over. I've got another one that's just a joiner. That's just for three mil wide tape. Obviously, if you join them over on this one, it's adds it up to six mil. So that's the plan. Right guys, this is a time consuming job doing this. Um, mainly because of uh, using aluminium, it's so reactive with other metals. So you either use all aluminium, aluminium screws as well, which is a bit of a job to find, especially when it comes to putting them in a steel roof, even if you pre-drill to get a good fixing, they're not the best thing because they're so soft. So we've got aluminium rods, aluminium tape, aluminium uh, brackets to hold those things and what I'm going to be doing is using this uh, high temperature silicon on the screws to uh, give it some protection so stainless steel screws we're using isn't as bad as other things like brass and copper apparently so it still does react so for extra protection I'm going to be putting this on around the hole that we're going through say the bracket and on the screw so that it's not in contact with that and that should um, be sufficient so it's just made it a messy job
So what I've got here, because um, copper and aluminium don't really go together, they um, they corrode each other, or one corrodes aluminium, I should say. Um, you have to have these bimetallic uh, pieces, and they've got something else in between them. I think they're just coated with something. There's a plastic holder there, like a bracket. Uh, they're really expensive for what they are, um, but we don't want it to just be rotting away under the ground. The aluminium end is going on the aluminium tape, and then on the copper end, we've got a tinned copper lug on the end of a 50 mil um, cable that's going to go from that to the uh, rod that's in the ground. So this is the tape we've been using and um, it's 3mm thick and 25mm wide and in the heat it just kind of wants to keep folding, wilting on itself almost. You know when you get a length it just keeps bending down and it's a bit cooler today, it's not as bad but it was an absolute nightmare, it was like an advert for um, erectile dysfunction or something, it was just like, you know, or impotence, it was absolutely embarrassing. It was hard work and uh, the trouble is it's been really hot I had time to try and do it and it's taken longer and you either do it in the heat or you end up doing it in the rain and that's exactly what's happened today. We had a little tiny splash of rain today and trying to climb along the roof isn't fun in the rain or the heat. So, And then they were predicting thunderstorms so I was in a rush to do it as well and we were getting a, little, a few thunderstorms were coming in today as I've been trying to finish this off. So I don't know if I'm going to finish it off, it all depends on what time the my wife and the children come home. So that's our uh, lugs on there, heat shrink on our 50mm cable. So the tape comes down off the barn, goes down a leg, and I've already got a earth rod at the bottom of that leg and I can't put another earth rod down there really close to it for the lighting so looking online there's loads of electricians having arguments about this how far to space their lightning rods or earth rods some people are saying if you've got an 8 foot rod you should go the same again apart with rods an 8 foot rod gives a protection zone of 8 foot another 8 foot rod gives a protection of 8 foot so you have to go 16 foot. Now the difference I've got is one of my rods for the earthing is only four foot rod and my lightning rod is an eight foot rod. So what I'm gonna do is go 12 foot. So that gives four foot protection for that one, the eight foot protection on that one of distances, and which is 12 foot. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm sure people will be arguing about it. You know, when you get professionals arguing about what is right, you know, what's little old me supposed to do? So that's what I'm doing. So I'm di I've got to dig a trench away from the other one and then dig a hole and then put the rod in. So this, um, this earth rod is eight foot long. It comes with like a protective coating on it, it's all greasy. So I want it to um, not be greasy, so I've got some petrol and a rag to clean it off with. Because I want it to be very conductive. <laughs> That's clever. Special trees around here. So I've got our 
rod in, 12 foot from the other rod. So then we'll put our tape down this channel. Uh, some people don't use tape for that bit, they come down the wall or whatever they, they're coming off of in tape and then they use cable. I didn't have enough cable. In fact, it was very easy to get tape in this country and not so easy to get cable. We've got this mess to deal with. Such blendy bloody stuff. So we've got to try and sort of unwind it and wind it out along the trench underneath to go the 12 foot to meet our rod the other side of this hedge and security fencing. <laughs> 